Okay, another mini lesson here for you. So, as you guys remember last time, if you watched the mini lesson, we talked a little bit about what is forensic science, kind of some of that basic background knowledge. So we're going to get into a little bit more of the scientific principles of crime investigation, and this time we're going to talk a little bit about forensic science theory. So this is the second kind of mini lesson within your unit. So let's just talk about some things briefly. Um, first of all, I want to kind of clarify, kind of clarify, because to be honest, I'm not sure if I totally know the difference. So let's talk about criminalistics versus forensics, okay? Criminalistics is the application of scientific principles to the identification, analysis, and evaluation of physical evidence. So I want you guys to think of criminalistics or criminology, um, or we also call them criminal scientists. So there's many different names for these kind of people. But they would be the people that show up at the crime scene first, maybe after those first responders like the police and, and you know fire department and stuff like that. But they are going to basically gather that evidence. They're going to do a little bit of analysis on it, a little bit of eval on it, okay? But basically, they're not going to do anything scientific, so to speak, because that's where we get into the forensic scientist part, okay? So the criminalistics is basically what it says more precisely describes what happens in a crime laboratory than basically forensic science, where we're actually applying a lot of scientific method, okay, which I'll get into in just a moment. So I want you to think of that, that um, when we talk about criminalistics, and if you wanted to get into some kind of a career that involves that, you don't necessarily need as much science background as you would if you were a forensic scientist. So don't you guys, even if you hate science, don't you just skip that and go to the criminalistic side. Although pretty cool, because you get to take that evidence and do some analysis with it, okay? So that's criminalistics. Um, so what we're looking at here, though, might be something you would see more in a forensic science lab, okay? The criminal part of it, the criminalistic part of it in a crime lab will not deal as much with kind of the... Um, experimental phase with the uh, the evidence that's found okay so what you're seeing right here would more precisely describe kind of forensics a shortened version version of the term forensic science which is the application of scientific processes to, to, to determine the facts of a crime so think about it you guys are this is a higher level um, science class so you guys have all taken maybe biology with me or even with a different teacher but you have undergone and, and learned the scientific method and those principles that we do for all experiments, okay? So that's really important because obviously that's what happens in order to determine the facts of a crime. Remember, I talked to you guys last time that a forensic scientist often acts as a witness on um, the stands of a crime because they are going to present the facts based on science, okay? So that's a little bit about forensics. So when I talk about the scientific principles or the scientific method, hopefully this rings a bell. Yeah, okay, remember? Observations. So even a forensic scientist will go to a crime scene, make those observations, okay, scan that. Um, there's a lot of people involved in a crime scene, but you might have someone that, um, you know, sketches the crime scene, takes photographs and such. But that all goes into the observations, and that will all be communicated to the forensic scientist. Then those observations are gonna to lead to questions. What questions can you gather? What do you think happened maybe at this crime scene? Because all those questions are going to start to form a hypothesis, okay? So even forensic scientists are going to form a hypothesis based on what they've observed and what questions they're starting to conjure up in their heads based on what they're seeing. Okay, these hypotheses must be tested. So now they're gonna test these through experimentation. And usually with the evidence they find, talking to witnesses, they're going to test this stuff with the experimentation process, okay? Then they're going to analyze that data, draw conclusions, and share the results, typically on, you know, the stands of a trial, possibly, okay? So, again, forensic scientists use the scientific process, observation, questioning, hypothesizing, analyzing, and concluding, okay? So, just like you guys have learned in past science classes, forensic science really isn't different. You still use those scientific principles. All right, now, listen closely, because I got a little song for you, all right? <laughs> a little cheesy rap, but nonetheless, you're going to hear the scientific process.
scientific method, okay? Observations, write down questions, come to a hypothesis, test it, and then analyze it, and then you have your conclusions. Okay, you got it. Um, now, let's move on here. So, all right, so we already did that. Let's go back. On to, oh yeah, I couldn't even forget what I was going to talk about next. Okay, Interpol. So I've got a kind of a cheesy video that we are not going to watch a lot because, oh my gosh, boring. But you have to understand that these people, okay, you're going to read about this in your lesson. This is the international kind of the, when you think about nations coming together in order to fight crime, that's what this is, okay? So here's the lovely logo that they go by. You're going you're gonna to see that. Um, you see that often. Basically, if you were a forensic scientist, you would be very familiar with this logo because these are the people that are working, um, you know, across the nations, cross countries to work together to fight crime. Okay. Well, Operation Laminar started with uh, an undercover operation in the Department of Internal Affairs in New Zealand. Uh, they were working undercover in what's known as Facebook groups, which are groups uh, set up on Facebook to allow people to form communities. And one of the communities, unfortunately, uh, formed on there is a community of sex offenders. And these sex offenders share, share child abuse material with each other. And um, the undercover officers were in there and were able to identify uh, a number of top individuals in these groups and Operation Laminar is where those individuals' details have been distributed to member countries of Interpol for investigation and hopefully prosecution. Various different countries have various different responses to this crime situation. In some countries, operational capacity is zero. In some countries, they have very hard-working but overworked units dealing with this crime type. And in countries like New Zealand, uh, US, especially with US ICE at federal level, um, Netherlands, Okay, all right, so, no, and I don't mean that to be rude or disrespectful. Um, I'm just, you know, me, come on, give me something to dance to. But no, those, um, the Interpol basically is a huge way to work together in order to draw more conclusions from, you know, other sources that are, you know, different countries and such. So that actually um, is actually kind of an interesting video, even though the guy itself is, not, he's not very that interesting. But um, talking about fighting a Facebook battle of sexual offenders and um, some things that are going on all over the, you know, na I mean, not nation, all over the world, okay? So that is kind of interesting to think about that, hey, these people are pulling together. So you'll notice that that is in your um, lesson. I wanted to touch on that a little bit so you guys have just a little bit more background on that. Um, but there you have it. There's a quick, simple, easy little lesson on forensic science theory. So next time, you'll see something else. All righty. Bye-bye for now.